All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wenatchee City Council meeting. For the record, it is Thursday, September 14th, 2017. It is 5.15 p.m. or so. Uh, we are out of uh, executive session. I call the meeting to order. The first item would be the pledge to our flag. Council Member Esparza, would you lead us? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's not on the agenda either. And for the record, roll call this evening. We have uh, five council members here. We have council member Harold and council member Kulas on the phone with us. At some point, council member Kulas will have to uh, move on, but we'll make that aware when we get there. First item on our agenda this evening are the consent items, which include, includes this evening's agenda, the vouchers, and the minutes from the previous meeting. I'm going to make a motion to approve the agenda, vouchers, and minutes from the previous meeting. Second. Second. Motion by Council Member Huffaker, second by Council Member Poyer to adopt this evening's consent items as shown in your packet. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening would be citizen comment. This would be a time if any member of the audience would like to address the council on something that's not on this evening's agenda. We'd ask you to come up and give you your name and address for the record. We'd give you three minutes or so. I don't see any takers. Okay, we will move on. We have four presentations this evening. Uh, the first one is regarding Young Professionals Week. Who has that one? I have that one. Council Member Esparza, would you read that into the record, please? Young Professionals Week, September 24th and 30th, 2017. Whereas Young Professionals Week is dedicated to celebrate, retain, and inspire young professionals in the city of Wenatchee, and whereas young professionals are recognized as an integral piece of the city of Wenatchee's current workforce and economic, social, and cultural future, and whereas community leaders, businesses, organizations, and young professionals will forge connections to drive the community forward through unique opportunities and partnerships. And whereas the community is encouraged to participate in the ongoing mentorship of young professionals and support creative thinking and enthusiasm in the city of Wenatchee's future leaders. Whereas Young Professionals Week in the city of Wenatchee is a resource for young professionals in the Wenatchee Valley, Valley to come together, network, and be exposed to things they may not have otherwise known to exist in their community. A variety of activities will be offered at different times of the day during Young Professionals Week for everyone to enjoy. Now, therefore, I, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim the, city, the week of September 24th through the 30th, 2017, as Young Professionals Week in the city of Wenatchee and encourage young professionals to attend the many downtown activities planned September 25th through the 29th as a way for young professionals to come together and connect and build relationships. In witness whereof I have caused the seal of the city of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 14th day of September 2017. Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Sparza. Meredith, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. What do you got for us? I have those for you guys, just in case you want to check out the Facebook event. It's okay. on there and a little bit of information on the back. So okay. we really appreciate the recognition. And are we going to expect Ooh, to see some stuff downtown? Yeah. Everything is downtown. I know, but <laughs> stuff specifically with this? Yes, absolutely. So 25th through 29th, there's going to be a week-long series of events. Everything is held within the downtown. So we certainly hope that people can come down and check it out. Great. All right. Thanks, Meredith. Thank you so much. Oh, picture. Sure. Is that really your pink phone, or is that somebody else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The next presentation this evening is regarding Suicide Prevention Month proclamation, and I actually have that one to read into the record. 
Whereas suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States and 8th leading cause of death in Washington <coughs> State, and whereas 121 people die by suicide every day in the United States, resulting in nearly 44,000 suicides each year. Whereas Chelan County has a higher rate of suicide than the Washington State average, and for several years, for several years, and whereas firearms are the leading method in Washington State and Chelan County, and whereas more than 90% of people who die by suicide have a diagnosable and treatable mental health condition, although often the condition is not recognized or treated, and whereas suicide is preventable if help is obtained and people know where to access help, and whereas organizations such as the Suicide Prevention Coalition of North Central Washington offer education, resources, outreach, and support for individuals affected by suicide and whereas organizations such as the Suicide Prevention Coalition of North Central Washington envision a world without suicide and are dedicated to saving lives and bringing hope to those affected by suicide. Whereas the City of Wenatchee recognizes that this is a community effort and wherever possible will encourage training in suicide prevention, knowledge of warning signs, the destimitation and seeking of mental health, and whereas the community members are depressed or possibly suicidal, Residents are encouraged to refer to counseling crisis services and to ask about suicidal thinking to save a life. And whereas the City of Wenatchee will be part of the solution and commit to a future of working towards zero suicide. Now, there are, now therefore, I, Frank Coons, Mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim the month of September to be Suicide Prevention Month in the City of Wenatchee, and I will work to encourage ongoing support of community efforts to eradicate suicide. Hi, Julie. How are you? Hey, hello, Dr. Rickard. How are you today? Great. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for doing this. Oh, absolutely. He's cut to the chase. How death. How death. How nine. Death and nine. And guess the doctor of death. It's what? You and the chair. Yeah. Oh, over here. I think. Oh, Tim is embarrassed to hold it. So here. Yeah, so I just want to thank the City Council and the Mayor for all the support that you've given the Coalition. The Coalition was founded in 2012 when we had our rash year of about 30 suicides. Since then we've been working again. I've recently taken over the, the direction of the Suicide Prevention Coalition and this proclamation is really the, the start of what we're going to do within the city. So we're working at Confluence Health to kind of get all four of our county primary cares to kind of work on zero suicide. So that's a commitment because we know 50% of the people that die by suicide have seen their primary care provider within the month prior to their death. But the other 50% is unaccounted for within our county and within our city, right? And so our job through the coalition is really to recognize it and to find those opportunities <coughs> to bring people to places to get help. And this really just brings that awareness and I just wanna thank you. Great, thanks Julie. Thank you. You bet. And our next presentation this evening is Gear Up Week Proclamation. Who's got the Gear Up Proclamation? I have that, Your Honor. Councilmember Bailey. Whereas gaining early awareness and readiness for undergraduate programs, or Gear Up, is a federally funded program designed to increase the number of students who stay in school and succeed in post-secondary education. And whereas Gear Up focuses on students from low income and underserved communities who might be the first person in their family to go to college, and whereas Washington Gear Up serves over 37,000 students in six, excuse me, in grades six through 12, and has enabled thousands of students to achieve the dream of going to college as a result of Gear Up grants awarded since 1999, and whereas Washington is committed to pro providing a quality education for all students, helping them to achieve their highest potential. Now, therefore, I, Frank J. Kuntz, as mayor of the city of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim September 17th through the 23rd, 2017, as Gear Up Week in Washington, and I encourage all people in our state to join me in this special observance. Signed this 14th day of September, 2017, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Bailey. Gabby, come on up. Oh, you got some friends with you. How are you? Nice to see you. Are you? Hi, how 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 are you?
So these are site directors, actually. Oh, okay. These are the people who put together the programming for our kids at the school. And Hillary is serving Westside with all the 10th, no, 12th graders, well, the whole school. And then she also has uh, Running Start students at Wenatchee Valley College, her, um, Gabe and Brian serve uh, nine, 10. And Diana serves the seniors graduating class, and I'm serving ninth grade with um, my other two coworkers who are not here. But we're um, divided among all the grades except 11. So, well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I got one more little presentation to do this evening. So we are uh, proud to announce that Councilmember Lyle Markhart has recently been awarded with a Certificate of Municipal Leadership from the Association of Washington Cities. AWC Certificate of Municipal Leadership Program recognizes local elected officials for accomplishing training in four core areas. The trainings provide city elected officials with the knowledge they need to effectively operate within the law, plan for the future, secure and manage funds, and foster community and staff relationships. Lyle joined Council Members Jim Bailey and Linda Harold, who have also been awarded the Certificate of Municipal Leadership, and Council Member Mark Kulas, who has received the Advanced Certificate of Municipal Leadership. So my personal congratulations to Lyle, and thank you for going through that program. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, we have a number of action items this evening. Uh, the first, I see Jeremy is here regarding, I don't even want to use this, the grit removal improvement program for a wastewater <laughs> treatment plant. I don't know what grit is. We got grits. Huh? I'm, I'm assuming, yeah. Usually you want where the grits is. is. It's where the grits is, okay. We got Jeremy, how are you this evening? Doing well. <coughs> Thanks for having me, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Um, I'm here to talk about an upcoming project at the treatment plant. As you're aware, we recently adopted a facilities plan and included in that plan was multiple CIP projects to <clears throat> upgrade the treatment process. And one of them is additional grit removal. Um, at the beginning of the treatment stream, um, we have the need to both take out a little bit of coarse grit before it enters the, the plant and the various process streams and also to meter the incoming flows before they get into the plant itself. So I'm here to ask for council's authorization for the mayor to, to negotiate a contract with Gray and Osborne and subsequently sign the contract. And so if we do the negotiating now, is this something that will be done in 2019, 2018? 20, uh, 2018. 2018, okay. Mm -hmm. Rihanna, I make a motion for the city council to authorize the mayor to negotiate with Gray and Osborne Incorporated for design services of the Wenatchee WWTP Grit Removal Improvements Project Number 1705 and further authorize the mayor to sign a contract on behalf of the city. Second. Motion by Councilmember Huffaker, second by Councilmember Markhart to authorize the mayor to negotiate and sign a contract with Gray and Osborne for design services for the wastewater treatment plant's grit removal improvement project. Jeremy, do we, or is this something that's just kind of, you know, the, the amount or levels, of, I guess, of all this grit and gravel and stuff, or is there something that is, it's increasing and there's something out there that's causing it to be more of a problem than it normally has been in the past? Well, we've been noticing a significant accumulation of grit particles in the influent pump station wet well. And by removing some of that material before it hits the plant, it does several things. One, it decreases the amount of... Uh, accumulation there and it changes the amount of grit and material that is used in several of the parameters associated with compliance and uh, removal of organic solids and other items measurements that the plant has to meet okay but there, there isn't like there's you know 
broken pipe someplace that's washing more dirt and gravel no, and stuff no, in no, and that no, kind no. of it's, thing. It, it's it's not the type of sediment rocks and stuff like that that you're okay. thinking of. It's a different type of coarse grit fraction. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I can go into additional detail if you really want. To. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're probably okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, I, what I don't know doesn't hurt me. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. Any other any other discussion? If not, hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> I probably think, for the record, that maybe Councilmember Kulas is no longer with us. No, I'm here. I oh, okay. voted aye. You just didn't hear me. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Linda got it first. All that's, right. That's because my phone was on mute. <laughs> All right. Second item is regarding an interlocal agreement for establishing a multi agency digital forensic unit. Captain Jim West. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, for your review is an interlocal agreement that involves several local law enforcement agencies, which includes Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, uh, both Chelan and Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and the Columbia River Drug Task Force, and the Washington State uh, Fish and Wildlife Police. Um, how this all began is the um, increased need in, for investigations to include forensic investigations into cell phones and computers and cloud servers. Um, there's an increased amount of crime that's being occur, well, that's being used on these devices that help um, establish these crimes to be occurring. So it's a necessity for us to be able to um, forensically examine these items in order to find evidence of a crime. And these crimes could include anything from homicide to theft to drug transactions, but it's also something that we could use for um, like missing persons or any type of abduction. So getting together with all the agencies, it's, uh, it's a very expensive um, proposition to purchase the software. And in fact, this software in particular is the gold standard for doing forensic examinations. And it's uh, Celebrite is the company. Um, the price tag for that software is like $33,000 and some odd cents. So I was able to um, partner with those local agencies in order to split that cost and to share um, basically the, the software in order to do these examinations. Um, in sharing those costs, it breaks down the price down to $5,623 per agency. Plus there's an annual licensing fee, which is 7,500 per year. But if you break that out into each agency, that's 1,250. Um, all the other agencies have uh, signed an agreement in order to be partners with us in this uh, forensic exam examination. Uh, we currently do have a forensic computer in place that we already have. It's just we don't have the software in order to um, complete these examinations. Now the cost of this um, also includes to train two investigators. Um, other than that, uh, I'm just asking for council approval in order to agree to this uh, interlocal agreement <laughs> and to um, help fund the uh, software program. Captain West, I have a couple questions. Um, I was doing some reading on this, and there's some, there, I believe there are some uh, cities that were not using this uh, appropriately taking cell phones, plugging it into something, and then they can get all deleted information. And then, um, I, so I'm just, I was worried about, um, this case came up that they actually got stopped by a speeding ticket. And they said, oh, well, if you wanna do this survey thing, you don't have to do a speeding ticket. You can just give me your cell phone because we're doing this little survey. And then they took that data and information. I, I guess I'm worried about privacy or issues. I know the city of Wenatchee is upheld, very impressive, but I just worry about this thing out there that's happened, I guess. I don't know anything about it. I was just kind of reading. Do you know any, can you help me with this? Yeah, I do. Um, we've been doing cell phone forensics before. In fact, I was the one doing them uh, before I got promoted. And the only way that we've done it in the past, and which was not the same kind of system that we're talking here, but uh, the only time that I would be looking into a phone or a computer is based on a search warrant. So we don't have that capability. It's, 
it's a software program that stays on a server that's at the station that's in a secured room. You can't take it out with you. Um, if you're going to take somebody's phone and search it, we have policies and procedures in place that for a chain of evidence. Um, it basically is just like any other piece of evidence that we've obtained from a crime. And in order to do a search, we're going to get a search warrant from a judge first and then conduct the search. So on the same token, it, you mentioned like if somebody's lost or something, if somebody has some cell phones, we could, somebody could say, hey, can you help me find my family member? You will, you, we can work on that aspect. Yes. And we can do it. Um, if somebody wants to provide consent for us to search the phone, then, then we can. Um, we can also do it on exigent circumstance, too. If it's an emergency situation where a child's abducted and we don't have time to go get a search warrant, we can do based on a search based on exigent circumstance to look. But that doesn't happen very often. So. Thank you. So the chances of abuse are extremely minimized because it's in a secure location and things like that. Yes, it's in a controlled room. Um, only the trained investigators and the administrator would have access to it. So then those other parties who wanted to do some sort of search here will be coming to our station and bringing the evidence and doing the work here? Okay, yes. Next question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's great that you got five other agencies to share the, the cost with us. Mm -hmm. That really helps. I assume the annual support would be shared among the six agencies as well. Yes, and it took me all year. <laughs> so does this program, is it like a more thorough search of the phone or, or, or um, there's, it's faster to yeah, search through the phone or both? This program compared to the one we had before, this one will be able to search more fo phones than before. Yeah, and basically, it's because of the operating systems of phones change so rapidly. Um, the, the other program that does the forensic search has to keep up with that technology. And the other program we had just wasn't doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, this one will also, what it'll do that we didn't have the capability before is to be able to search um, cloud servers like Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, anything like that, you know, based on a search warrant to search it, of course, um, we'll be able to get into that information to, to provide us evidence or a location of a missing person. I mean, it, it, that's where all the chats occurs in the, in the cloud servers. So um, it's, a, it's a big step beyond what we've had before. Very good. Yep. Looks like a really good deal. All right. So I would entertain a motion if we had one. Mayor, I'll make a motion for the City Council to authorize the Mayor to enter into the interlocal agreement between Schland County, Douglas County, the City of Wenatchee, the City of East Wenatchee, the Washington State Fish and Wildlife Police, and the Columbia River Drug Task Force for establishing a multi-agency digital forensic investigation unit to include the purchase and annual licensing for Celebrate <coughs> Mobile Forensics. Second. Motion by Councilmember Poyer, second by Councilmember Esparza to authorize the mayor to enter into an interlocal agreement and ultimately purchase some software for Celebrate Mobile Forensics. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Jim. Next item on our agenda is regarding a moratorium for uses of outdoor storage in North Wenatchee. <laughs> Stephen, how are you, sir? Doing well. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. So before you uh, this evening, we have uh, ordinance number 2017-20, which would uh, initiate a six-month moratorium on uses in the North Wenatchee Business District in the old station area. Uh, uh, on um, uses that have a significant outdoor storage component, such as boat sales and rentals, building materials, equipment rental, uh, mini storages, light industry. Uh, and uh, so in, earlier this year, the city annexed the old station area and uh, the uh, sub-area plan of the Sunny Slope. Uh, sub-area plan identifies this as a, an area or zone of change uh, that uh, eventually sees this area transitioning from uh, what it is now to a mixed residential commercial area. And this moratorium would give the city staff an opportunity to look at the uses, to discuss uh, with the planning commission and the property owners 
uh, the vision that was established uh, as part of the sub-area plan for Sunny Slope adopted by the city and to uh, just make sure that the uses that are envisioned in the that district uh, are appropriate and meet the vision of the city moving forward. Um, the ordinance also uh, would establish uh, October 12th, uh, 2017 as a public hearing on this item. Uh, so then would be an opportunity for the public, for property owners to come and address with you and enter into the record of public testimony uh, on this item. Uh, in the uh, agenda report, uh, we have provided a draft uh, schedule of uh, looking at the comprehensive plan, the sub-area plan, working with the Planning Commission, doing our public outreach to the property owners, and then coming back to you with the recommendation of the, the Planning Commission. So um, we included a motion that would uh, support or uh, approve the moratorium, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have as well. So this moratorium would only apply in the old station area? That's correct. Okay. I saw the map in here, and it's colored, and it's just the old station area. Okay. That's correct. So yes, Exhibit A of the ordinance uh, identifies the property. Yeah, there's some of that's got different zoning. So we just did the... Part of the zoning in Old Station is North Wenatchee Business District Correct. Zone. So it's the North Wenatchee Avenue Business District zoning within Old Station. That's correct. I've gotten two so things right today. Is, yeah, Mark? Well, this is Council Member Kulas. So really what we're talking about here is not a prohibition on any uses as much as a, essentially a timeout to analyze how this fits into uh, uh, how this fits into our planning schema. That's correct. Okay, thank you. And then obviously there's process that needs to take place over the next six months to have us relook at this again, and planning staff will take take that up. Yes, so we would work with the, the planning commission. We would notify property owners within the North Wenatchee Business District. A public comment, and then correct. we would either then change some sort of uh, land use regulation or just allow it the way it is. That's correct. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, is there, um, in terms of the zones, which we're referring to this, it gets a little bit confusing to me. Uh, we're talking about the North Wenatchee Avenue or North Wenatchee, you know, business district. Is the the, the actual North Wenatchee area and Old Station are those considered the same? Are they zoned the same, or are those two different zone districts? You're kind of using the same name, but are they are they different or the same? They're the same zoning district. Okay. Yeah. So why are we not including the, the all of the North Wenatchee? So we're district. looking uh, specifically as it relates to the the sub area plan of the Sunny Slope uh, area. So with the city's adopted in 2007 that Sunny Slope plan, the city's uh, annexed that area now uh, earlier this year, mm -hmm. uh, and so we want to take a look at that and just make sure that uses there are appropriate for that vision that was put in place in 2007 moving forward. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion if we had one. Your Honor, I'll, I will make a motion to approve ordinance number 2017-20, adopting a six-month moratorium within the city of Wenatchee on the acceptance of applications for establishment, siting, location, permitting of new outdoor sales or rentals, or new uses involving storage of merchandise, inventory, or equipment in the North Wenatchee Business District located in the Old Station area to be effective immediately, setting a date for a public hearing on the moratorium, and declaring an emergency necessi necessitating Immediate adoption of the moratorium. Second. Motion by Council Member Esparza. Second by Council Member Bailey to approve Ordinance 2017 20, adopting a six month moratorium and establishing a date for a public hearing regarding certain business activities in the uh, North Wenatchee <coughs> Business District located in Old Station. Discussion. Well, I'm just going to say that when I first read this, it feels like. Uh, a restriction on private property owners' rights. 
but I'm okay with the idea of the moratorium because it creates the public process where we can discuss things. And it sounds like there was some uh, concern from some of the neighbors, so I think this is a good process to get this out in the open and have some conversations with property owners and other people involved. Mm -hmm. All right, any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Thanks for being here tonight. Hello, Gary Owen. Yeah. We're going to close out some contracts, it sounds like. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council members, present and Great. remote. <laughs> um, well, before we do some, before we get rid of some contracts, we're going to do the uh, right away along Omi Garden. Sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, the, the county, um, thankfully, we're glad they're doing this. They're looking at controlling some stormwater off of their big uh, yard site out there next to the fire station. And they discovered that this old state right away is very, very wide and actually goes quite a ways into the yard that they currently use beyond the fence you see on top of the hill there. And uh, there's an exhibit that I provided. So we talked about how they can still go forward with their project, looked at uh, you know what the potential public use of that right away may be and could be in the future. Uh, we didn't see any need for it uh, in the future for anything other than potentially something like stormwater treatment. So. Uh, we feel the uh, staff feels that this would be very beneficial to our stormwater utility and the uh, the uh, public road system and adjacent properties out in in uh, that uh, that part of old station so we uh, we went ahead and and put together this uh, resolution for you all to consider the vacation of that portion of right away as it's laid out on the the attached map um, that portion of omi road Omi Garden Road. So was it safe to say that some of the county yard is currently on city right of way? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and we're being nice partners to the county and letting them change the right of way so that they can put some storm protection on their pro on the property. Would... Yeah, because currently most of the stormwater runoff goes directly to Omi Garden Road. Yeah. And we've got some stormwater problems out there, so we welcome some control. Um, certainly. Do we and, have any uh, control over the control, or are we just going to let them control it the way they want to? Uh, well, they're infiltrating a lot of water, which we're happy to see. So that's that much less water in the ditches okay. that's, that, you know, when there's events that has to be, you know, dispersed amongst other private properties that is pretty out of control there right now. We have a lot of work to do in stormwater out in the old station area. Okay. The other part of this was they noticed that. Uh, um, and we haven't, we'll talk to the fire district as well. Um, one of their buildings is actually on the right of way line, partly on the right of way. So the county went ahead and set this up to cover them. I think they talked with um, the chief and uh, we'll talk with him, make sure he's comfortable with it and doesn't want to, you know, extend it further across his property or anything. But uh, we mm -hmm. took this far enough across the adjacent property, the fire district property, to, uh, so that we would get that portion of that uh, building a fire that belongs to fire district one out of the city right away. I wish I knew that beforehand. That would have been a good phone call to Chief Burnett. To say, <laughs> <laughs> Get fire station off our property. <laughs> well, the, you know, the GIS maps or nothing really shows this. The county didn't even know this until they got looking in a little bit harder into the, into the actual right away descriptions out there. So. All right. Thanks, Gary. Any questions for Gary? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve resolution number 2017-47, initiating the vacation of a portion of the city right-of-way along Omega Garden Road. Second. Motion by Council Member Huffaker, second by Council Member Hoyer to adopt resolution 2017-47, vacating a portion of Omega Garden Road. Discussion? Uh, Gary, the only thought I, I guess, had as, I, as I'm looking at your map here is that, uh, you know, you Kind of that that strip along there does that now goes to the county does does that inhibit us in any way you know future work on on that road if it has to be read you know more other development that might have to be done on there that we have to do now, now that we have given that up we may need it in the future you know the way i look at it is that would that would only be the case if we were doing you know like 
rural kind of road improvements like widening out the ditch and laying back the cut slope or fat flattening the fill slope, mm -hmm. which we don't do in our urban areas. We mm -hmm. typically improve the right of way to the right of way line and then turn it over to the adjacent property owner. Okay. So I wouldn't see that. I would see the future of this road and it's the same down the road as you go out toward 97A is, you know, if it if, if development gets more intense, it'd probably be retaining walls, you know, behind sidewalk mm. um, up to, you know, improvements uh, um, on the private property on the other side of that. So it's this is real common in old state highways where they, you know, in rural areas where they were looking at the future, potentially adding lanes, making a two lane road, a four lane road and that sort of thing. And that we don't see that anywhere on our transportation planning horizon. Okay, thanks. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Gary. Now we're going to accept some projects. <laughs> yeah, this is a final acceptance uh, voucher for project number 1303, which was the TIB funded project where we reconfigured the intersections at uh, Miller and Chelan and Miller and Mission Streets that I'm sure most of you will remember. I've been in and out of here a few times uh, talking about that project. Uh, the last the last time was when our bids came in um, way, way higher than we expected and, and uh, the TIB wasn't going to cover it all on this one. And uh, we went ahead and, and went forward with funding the overage and awarding the project uh, to the contractor anyhow so that we could get it done so that we could get the paving project done that came right in on the heels of this one last year. Um, so the, the project uh, was complete. Um, pretty close to the uh, bid uh, the bid price on it by the time all was said and done. And in addition to that, the TIB uh, did come through and fund the remaining part of the project at their 85-15% uh, um, ratio. So the, the uh, Arterial Street Fund was uh, reimbursed um, at the same ratio as, as the rest of the project that where we went into the project because we went past our 10% administrative that we um, are allowed so I took a trip to Spokane and and they were great the TIB board was wonderful and and uh, they helped us out good hmm. so that's good news and when we do these things is this when the warranty starts or is this part of just they've already been paid obviously so this is just more like paperwork well we've been through this before and I, I spoke recklessly if I recall correctly um, but this is you know and and Steve can help me out with this but this is just you know where the contractor agrees not to come back on us okay. uh, with any claims or anything, and, and agrees that you know we, they've been paid in full, they've completed the work, they've fulfilled their their part of the contract. Got it. Well, the warranties usually start on the date of substantial completion is when you that's the date when you can use it as for the purpose intended. This is final acceptance. This does have legal significance though, in that as Gary said, it closes out the contractor's situation on the contract, but it also sets in motion a time for um, subcontractors or material providers that if they haven't been paid by the contractor, they now the clock's now ticking on them to make a claim against retainage okay. and bonding, and also it sets the time on the on the state to collect their taxes that are due on the job. So within 45 days, those claims have to be made, and if not, they're, they're gone. So it, it just starts in motion the final resolution of the contract. Got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you seen the warranty we get on these? I don't know. But I, just, I, just, I was going to say, do we get a warranty on these, Gary? <laughs> yeah. 30 feet, 30 seconds? Yeah. We get warranties on some of the components, like some of the electrical parts, signal parts, and that sort of thing. But, yeah, as far as the, you know, the asphalt on the ground and the concrete work, that's different. Well, I'll make a motion for the City Council to accept the work performed by the contractor KRCI LLC on the Mission Street, Miller Street intersection and... Chelan Avenue, Miller Street and Springwater Street intersection project number 1303 and further authorize the mayor to sign the final contract voucher on behalf of the city of Wenatchee. Second. Motion by Councilmember Poyer, second by Councilmember Markhart to uh, accept the work performed by contractor KRCI on our project number 1303 and authorize the mayor's signature. Question or comment, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
<coughs> now the same song for project 1519. Yeah, this, this project 1519 was the paving project um, that followed uh, in the footsteps. We would have liked to combine it, but we couldn't at the time. So it followed right behind uh, 1303. And this did the paving and the final pavement markings and vehicle detection uh, work associated with the 1303 project. This project was funded, um, all the asphalt costs and everything was funded under an agreement that we did with the State uh, Department of Transportation as they're responsible for the pavement, basically everything between the curbs. Um, uh, the, and um, so we had an agreement, they paid for that, and then there was about $77,000 of that TIB money from the 1303 project that we used in this one that took care of some of the striping and, and, uh, and uh, some of those sorts of things. So we were able to get it all done last year. Your Honor, I make a motion for the City Council to accept the work performed by the contractor Granite Construction Company on the Mission Miller and Chelan Miller Pavement Preservation Project number 1519 and further authorize the mayor to sign the final contract voucher on behalf of the city of Wenatchee. Second. Council, uh, motion by Council Member Huffaker, second by Council Member Bailey to authorize the mayor's signature on the final contract voucher for project number 1519 regarding Mission and Miller and Chelan Miller pavement project. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And the final one is regarding project 1502-1230, whatever that is. Well, this was a combination of a couple of HSIP projects. We talked about them a little bit at the Transportation Council meeting this morning, Mr. Mayor. Um, this was the project uh, where we installed that uh, hybrid pedestrian signal down there on Mission Street uh, near Bridge Street, La Fuentes in that area. Uh, we also installed the rapid flash beacons uh, up the hill, um, up at Ferry and Medhow by the market, mm -hmm. and uh, the same flashing beacons at uh, Washington and Elliott Avenue. We also, with the project, did uh, the curb bulb outs at Mission and Arondo, Chelan and Ninth, Chelan and Palouse, and Chelan and Yakima Street. Um, and uh, great project, a lot of a lot of. A lot of benefits, a lot of money for um, uh, to benefit pedestrian safety in the in the city of Wenatchee. We were happy to get this one done. Well, I might have a question. It might be for Captain West, but do, do you know, like, has it uh, decreased um, anything, or can we even tell yet? I mean, decreased incidences, or well, you know, I don't think even a year's gone by yet. So we unfortunately don't have people to sit and, and uh, as much as I would like to be able to, you know, do a lot more work on looking at uh, collision histories and, you know, on along corridors and at specific intersections and, and locations. So I can't answer that question. Um, I have not heard of any, uh, you know, any significant mm -hmm. accidents uh, at any of these locations since uh, these, these have gone in. I'm curious, a long time ago, whatever that means. Uh, I know it was like by, Dorian Village is that the one not too far from the Dutch Brothers one? You know, somebody was hit and yep. killed there, and and I think that was I don't know if that was the beginning of this process or it took a long time, but I just knew there was incidences there uh, in the past. So I mean, sure, bright, sure does the, th it sure seems like it'll do the the job, I guess. Yeah, we did have a significant claim. Us and the DOT both worked through that one on on the one that you mentioned there on Mission Street. Uh, years ago mm -hmm. um, but we're hoping that this is going to help we got a little bit more work to do down there I, I think still to get some adequate spacing for more you know protected pedestrian crossings but uh, these really helped mm -hmm. well just as a driver you know I've it's made a huge difference mm -hmm. just anytime you drive by you can there. just see them oh, oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. Well, made both on mission yeah both on mission and the, and the one up on on ferry there at the top of the hill uh, by Metow there. I mean, that, that one is really, to me, probably the, the big game changer because as you come up that hill and a lot of times, you know, people are getting ready to cross or whatever, and just, just that visibility here really has, has enhanced the, 
the uh, the safety of, of that area. Uh, Gary, related, when we get back on the on the, the Miller Chelan exchange in there, we as I understand it, a lot of that change in there was to to in, widen those lanes to make uh, better turning radiuses for trucks going through that intersection. Uh, I, I guess kind of following up on your question, Mike, is that does that seem to be helping? Don't have those truckers crowding the crowding the other lane as they're coming around there and that kind of thing. Yeah, it, probably if I went back through and, and uh, did an accident analysis, I would imagine, because we were pretty regularly having uh, a lot of collisions where trucks were basically running over cars that were next to them or off-tracking onto them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason that they went through downtown, because they, didn't, didn't want, because they got tickets for that. <laughs> um, and that's why they were going through downtown, because they didn't have to turn. They could stay on the straight mm -hmm. and narrow. Um, now they've got that off-tracking ability, and I'm, I'm sure that the number of incidents uh, with uh, truck off-tracking is, is at those intersections is much less. I thought you were referring more to the pedestrian collisions at some of these pedestrian locations. Um, yeah, everything, yeah. safety. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like how we're, I, I like this. It may, to me, it's, it's bringing a uh, uh, community together that we care. Just one more step, we care. That's the way I see it. Well, we tried, we passed the complete streets policy last year, and I think we'd already started a number of things like this, and, and I expect we're going to continue to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. I can, uh, there's just definitely a need for more. Uh, you know, people still don't want to take the time to walk down and use the proper crossing, and so you still see people crossing at other places, and, and those people are putting themselves at great risk. So this is a great project. Thank you. Good. Your Honor, I will make a motion for City Council to accept the work performed by the contractor W.M. Winkler Company on the Citywide Pedestrian Safety Improvements Project, number 1502-1230, and further authorize the Mayor to sign the final contract voucher on behalf of the City of Wenatchee. Second. Motion by Councilmember Esparza, second by Councilmember Markhart to... <coughs> Accept the work performed by W.M. Winkler and Company for the citywide pedestrian safety improvement projects and authorize the mayor to sign the final contract papers. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Gary, thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Mitch, how are you, sir? Good, Mr. Mayor, how are you? Good. Council members? Good I'm evening. I'm confused. What is that? We're giving them right away for free, and then we're taking on a stormwater system. I don't understand this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hopefully award, I'll be able to... We should get an award for niceness. I think there is a trophy in the works. All right, perfect. Uh, I do have a graphic that might help with this. I was, uh, I was hoping your graphic was clearer than the one we got in the yeah. packet. Yeah. The one in the, in the agreement is a little bit <laughs> difficult to discern. So I've actually got... Two different ones. We're down to no signal on our TV. Oh, Tim. <laughs> Might I get some assistance? Uh... Ah. TV's off. Lovely. Hang it. We were in the second quarter of the game, too, when they turned the TV off. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got two different versions of this. Okay. There you go. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we are. Okay. So the old station, Regional Pond. And uh, <laughs> this will be my pointer, my hand here. So that's this parcel. It's about four acres. Um, just to the east of that is McDougal Fruit, Old Station Road, right to the north. Um, and this this pond was basically built uh, as a joint project with the port in Chelan County. Uh, it was brought into the Chelan County's uh, stormwater utility upon completion. So there's a couple different agreements in here that are referenced. Um, the termination of stormwater agreement is actually the transfer of all the rights of the pond to the county from the port as a mutual project. 
Uh, the name of that agreement's a little different, termination of stormwater. There's still plenty of stormwater, so that's not being terminated. <laughs> um, but effectively, when we annexed Old Station uh, last year, uh, this all became part of our stormwater utility boundary. All the stormwater in Old Station and Chatham Hill effectively drains into this pond with its, some small exceptions. Uh, so it's a very necessary component of our stormwater utility. Uh, without it, we effectively don't have a utility that's operating in that area. So over uh, many months, uh, many meetings, a lot of legal work, we've drafted an agreement that effectively transfers the pond to us. Uh, instead of paying a, a fee for the property and the use of the pond, we effectively gave the county the rights to the stormwater fees in the old station area from the time of annexation till December 31st, 2016. And then until we annex the Chatham Hill area, they will continue to collect the stormwater fees in that area, but we will accept the water. So in the Chatham Hill area, it's still in the unincorporated county. They'll maintain the system, but the water still drains to the pond. So that's effectively about $100,000 worth of fees from last year that the county still collected. Uh, the value of the pond is really difficult to, to measure. Uh, I look you at the, it as- You mean the liability of the pond? There the is a little bit of that. However, uh, you know, the cadmium, <laughs> You know, we have a concentrations in the soil out there from 1.5 to four and a half parts per million. Uh, we're actually allowed to put biosolids out on, on ground at 85 parts per million. So the thing with cadmium, even though it is a toxic metal, it's really immobile in soil. So they perceive that there could be a possibility of cleanup, which would effectively be digging all this up and hauling it to the landfill, you know, a couple feet worth of the bottom of the pond. The likelihood of that happening is very small because cadmium doesn't really move through soil unless you have a high acid concentration like acid rain that mobilizes it. Uh, it doesn't even go into an aqueous uh, phase easily if it's in soil. So, meaning going into water. So even water is going through it, it's pretty much stuck where it is. So unless we change the use of the facility to a park or something else where we might want to be concerned with that, and even at those levels. Um, it's probably not going to go anywhere. I don't really see a, a long-term future cost on a horizon to that effect either. It really comes from uh, fertilizers. That's effectively where most of that comes from. So, um, How often is there water in that pond? During rain events, water does get into it. Has it ever overtopped? Uh, I don't believe so. Is it draining into the Wenatchee River at some point, or is it just it a could pond? potentially? Is there a system designed to make that yes. happen? Or, yes. Okay. Uh, so. In the termination of stormwater agreement, we've got a permit with the PUD for an overflow. So let me zoom up on this a little bit. Oh. So it is built into the system. Okay. This little piece here got it. Okay. is the stilling basin. So all the water goes into this pond. Uh, there's a pipe right at this location that'll uh, <coughs> pump. Well, it doesn't pump, but it effectively moves into the stilling basin, and at that point, there's riprap that goes over the slope, and it could go into the Wenatchee River. To my knowledge, that has never happened. This okay. pond has such tremendous capacity and high infiltration rates that uh, we don't see that as being very frequent. You know, so it'll take more than a 100-year storm. A um, couple provisions the port requested was since back in the day between the county and the port, they had agreements with their connected properties that they wouldn't have to pay for connection fees. Um, that's still being honored. However, because stormwater is not a vested right based on you know, this year's Supreme Court decision on Snohomish County versus the Pollution Control Hearings Board, those things can change and they are changing. So if at some point in the future properties out in the port area that are already connected have to do more treatment than is available in this pond, they'll have to do that on their properties, but they'll still get a credit for contributing to building the pond um, 10, 15 years ago. The big one right now is McDougal. Right. No, and I've got, you know, there's various properties. Some of them are connected. We did give the port the option if they wanted to assign undeveloped properties different credits because they still own them. Uh, then we thought that was fine. That was, those are their properties, their credits. Uh, we just needed to put a a snapshot in time as to how much stormwater treatment the pond really provides, because in the future with stormwater regulations being more and more stringent, 
you know, it may not be able to handle 100% of all impervious in the area. In fact, it won't. So it was a, uh, I think we basically maintained the, the spirit of what was originally intended. At some point as we put sewers through this area, would we connect it in there so that it would go through the treatment plant? Uh, no, we wouldn't want to have combined sewering because uh, that's going to take quite a bit of I our mean, capacity. I mean, we, we, we funnel the rest of our stormwater in our city through treatment through the sewer plant of some sort, do we not? Uh, there some are of portions of it, yes, but uh, ideally so we actually want to remove that because that's taken away a lot of capacity at the plant. But, but presently, our stormwater system doesn't really provide... O overflow, maybe. How about the, the overflow, overflow condition? does go in there. Okay. Um, but there are actually a lot more cost-effective ways to deal with that if it was an issue. Okay. And lastly, it's really hard to tell, is there a fence around this? Uh, yes, <clears throat> there is. Okay. So there's contaminants in there, and there's a fence to keep children from getting out of there and getting contaminated. Right, the, the contamination levels in the soil aren't such that it really poses a health risk for or walking if down it was there. full, get into the water and drown. Or, right. You know, the yeah. liability issue. Yeah, the drowning issue would be the one we'd be most concerned with. At the end of the day, we're taking on a stormwater system that's now in the city, so it makes sense for us mm -hmm. to do so. We're doing it as a favor to the county, allowing them to collect stormwater fees for a period of time that they shouldn't have been able to, and then continuing to take on the the stormwater fees from um, Chatham Hill, which is dumping into what's going to be now our stormwater system. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, this is a good deal for the county. It's okay for us. We still have the larger stormwater issue in Olive Old Station that we, I'm sure staff is working on, but we haven't quite got to the end on that. So uh, this this is a good deal for the county and it's okay for us. Mm -hmm. Is that a good way to describe that? The Chatham Hill fees are all residential. So that's only a few thousand dollars a year, like less than the five. The principal. Well, true. However, we, we didn't actually have to pay directly for the property and the and the system that connects right. to it or the easement. So I think it's a win-win. Okay. You look at stormwater as an asset. I look at it as a liability. It's both. <laughs> Maybe that's where we're going. <laughs> it's both. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Any other questions for, for Mitch? Well, Your Honor, I'd uh, make a motion for the City Council to approve the intergovernmental transfer agreement with Chelan County and the Port of Chelan County and authorize the mayor's signature. Second. Motion by Councilmember Bailey, second by Councilmember Huffaker to <clears throat> approve the intergovernmental, intergovernmental transfer agreement with Chelan County and the port for the stormwater system at Old Station and authorize my signature. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, uh, we have an annexation to do. Who's in? T oh, Brooklyn, how are you? Good, how are you? And Good. Matt. More Matt. Oh, I'm Matt. How are you? <laughs> Team effort tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Matt Parsons, Associate Planner. And Brooklyn Holton, Housing Community Planner. Uh, we have before you uh, Resolution 2017-48. This is to set the public hearing for the Sheeney annexation. Uh, this is step two of three. Uh, you might be thinking this is the third time it's been before you. We repeated the first step, so uh, we did step one twice. But this is step two. Um, we have a, a valid petition that's been um, certified by the assessor's office. And so now uh, we're finally getting to the last step where uh, I just need to pass an ordinance. And so we've set uh, September 28th as uh, the date of, of, that, of the hearing on, on this annexation. We've heard this before, correct? Yeah. 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 Your Honor, I make a motion yeah. to approve Resolution 2017-48, fixing time for public hearing on petition for annexation Second. of the un Sorry. unincorporated <laughs> area at the northwest corner of Stella and Walnut, also known as the Sheena Annexation. Second. <laughs> motion by Councilmember Huffaker, second by Councilmember Markhart to adopt Resolution 2017-48, fixing the time for the public hearing on the Shenai annexation. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks guys for being here. Mr. Smith, interlocal agreement. 
between the city and the county regarding the cleanup of 609 Lynn Street. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, Steve Smith, City Attorney. So this is an interlocal agreement between the city and Chelan County that we are proposing for the assistance of the county in collecting a judgment that the city has for a code enforcement case. Um, and this came about, well, the background is that the city has a judgment for cleanup costs against a, a code enforcement issue property that we had years ago. And um, we got a judgment against the property. A judge, so it's a lien against that particular property. And then this summer, we got a notice from the county that they were starting a foreclosure process. They have to get a title report to do that process. That discloses all the liens on the property. And then the county's required to give notice to all the people that have liens because their tax foreclosure wipes those liens out. Anything behind them could get wiped out. So we got that notice. Um, so our finance director, uh, Mr. Posenjack, contacted the treasurer, Dave Griffiths, uh, to talk about it. And um, they agreed that it'd be a good idea if the county tacked our um, judgment onto the tax foreclosure sale and tried to collect it for us at the, at the sale. There's a statute that actually allows the county to collect a city charge that way. They can add it to the tax bill. Um, but they have to have a contract to do that. So that's why we prepared this interlocal agreement. And um, uh, it's a win for us. It's, you know, it's not a win for the county, but it's just something they're willing to do for us by contract. And they're so not charging us anything? No, no. Is this just apply to this specific property or is this one that is this more general in nature that could apply to this the next time it happens? This agreement just applies to this specific property, but that's a good point. It actually occurred to me that I think we may want to explore with them a more general agreement that mm -hmm. each time we, we get a judgment, we could um, give this to them and not necessarily wait for the foreclosure sale process that we ask them to add it to their tax statement so that we could collect maybe on a on a quicker basis annually so i i would want to explore that but at least initially this agreement is just for this property but normally we we get these judgments and we uh, collect them pretty passively we just let the lien sit there and, until they either sell or refinance the property and that's when we get paid so but when someone's already foreclosing it just makes sense to go after yeah it. it's great for us i mean this is perfect and i'll tell you the other benefit is apparently we don't have the title report, but uh, the treasurer, Dave Griffiths, indicated that there's a really large judgment on this property, like a million bucks. And if they're ahead of us, I mean, that would wipe us out, too. I mean, if the tax sale didn't wipe us out, that would wipe us out. So. And just for your uh, information, this has been a, a house that we have had a number of meetings with staff on, number of meetings with the neighbors, number of meetings with our police officers and department regarding activities at the street. So we've been trying to figure out what we can do legally to uh, get it cleaned up and get the folks that are trespassing on the property, living there, whatever's going on there, out of there. And so uh, we've been trying to figure out a way, and this is probably as creative as any in terms of getting it through the foreclosure process, get our money out of it. And it's, it's been a mess. We've been at this for 18 months, 16 months, been a while. So we've been just trying to figure out a way to move these folks along. Steve, I didn't understand the million dollars. Didn't you say a million dollars? What that's, million dollars? Or? That's what my um, the notes in our file say that Dave told us there was a million dollar judgment on this property. So somebody, there's a creditor of this property owner that got a judgment against them, and it's pretty substantial. That's what I would say. Yeah, I guess. Oh. No. Right. And then our judgment is an unsecured lien, mm -hmm. similar to somebody else's judgment. So if uh, you know, we could get wiped out by this tax sale, and if there was enough money paid and they, they were in front of us, they might get money where we wouldn't, so we could get wiped out. So by by getting tacked onto the tax sale, we kind of jump ahead in priority. Uh, so it's a great deal for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just... All right, I feel better about giving them the right of way now. <laughs> <laughs> Taking on the storm sewer. All right. Yeah, yeah no right, fee. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm it's sorry. like, a, I'm, it's too good to be true. I'm not sure. <laughs> So Your Honor, I will make a motion for City Council to approve the interlocal agreement with Chelan County and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Second. Motion by Council Member Esparza, second by Council Member Poyer to authorize the mayor to approve the interlocal agreement. 
document or sign your local agreement with Chelan County regarding 609 Lynn Street. Steve, I'm, I'm curious with, you know, with a bit of language here uh, where it said that in the third, fourth, two, three, four, fourth paragraph of our statement here, it says the county has agreed to attempt to collect uh, is that, I guess I kind of... Well, they're not guaranteed. That's kind of like, yeah. maybe we will, maybe we won't, or depending on how we feel yeah. this day, or... How, no one shows up to the auction. Yeah, well, they're... I mean, that word attempt kind of gives me... Yeah, well, they're not a guaranteeing that they're going to collect it. They're just, they're agreeing to add it on to the tax sale amount. Okay. And so there's no guarantee, though, that we're going to get the money back. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know... So the way it, the way it works is it, if the tax is worth thousand dollars and our thing is fifty dollars, they add it on and it's a thousand and fifty bucks. So <laughs> they collect their thousand and send us a check for fifty. Is that kind of the way it works? Yeah, that'd okay. be the way it works. I mean, okay. it it could happen that they um, nobody bids at the sale. They they bid in the amount they're owed on taxes and they get the property back for that. The okay. what they will do though is they'll add our amount onto their amount. So that if they get the property at the sale, then they can sell it privately, maybe, hopefully. And yeah. then at that point, hopefully we'd all get paid then back. Then everybody gets paid, yeah. yeah. But in theory, if, if it's worth 30000 bucks or so, we should get our money back, right? I don't know we if the should. tax lien's probably ten grand, our lien's twelve or fifteen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it probably is worth more than that. One should be. 160. <laughs> I was looking it up. One sixty. It's not worth one sixty. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty it's trash. It's not so. worth one sixty. Oh, yeah. You can go give one sixty, and you're not going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> <laughs> Mayor's report. I don't even know where to begin. I haven't been here in a while. You guys haven't seen me. I was in Misawa, Japan for 10, 11 days. Uh, that was a great trip. Um, I encourage you all to try to figure out how to get over there one time if you can during your uh, council ship. Um, pretty remarkable trip. Mayor Lacey really does a nice job and the folks in Misawa are pretty amazing. So um, uh, really great, great trip. People ask me how my vacation was. I'll tell you it's not a vacation because I'm in the suit and tie giving speeches, but um, still a very interesting trip and uh, our culture is pretty cool. And uh, and then we've been back just working on a ton of stuff. Um, I know Brad's out this week, so we got some preliminary budget stuff. Uh, I, I do think we are probably in line to get all of our property tax to the road fund. I haven't seen anything that indicates we're not going to be able to do that. So that's a pretty exciting, um, that's another 750 grand this year to go to our road fund that we won't need in our general fund because of the old station annexation for the most part and the utility taxes and so forth. So um, never thought we'd be able to say that every penny of property tax is going to roads, but I think in 2018, we'll be able to say that I'd be really close. Uh, obviously, we had a bunch of stuff in exec session, which most of the stuff that I've been working on has been kind of exec session related. Um, don't know what else really we're got going on, Allison. You probably got a better handle on. So, um, uh, just for like updates for next week. <laughs> yeah, that works. Okay, so um, we only have LTAC next Wednesday. We didn't have a quorum for TPA. So we did have business for TPA, but they'll have to wait till October. Um, and then next Wednesday night, the housing forum, Our Valley, Our Future. Um, it's really fascinating. They did a survey. Um, we had kind of our data from the study that was done in 2016. And so they did an in-depth survey, uh, 1,700 responses uh, to get community perceptions and match that up to our data. So they'll... Uh, release that and then be putting together a regional housing um, solutions group to start working on some of these issues as a as a region so six o'clock at Pibus and then we have directors and work section session next week so yeah so the work session will probably go over uh, probably in more detail uh, the Confluence Parkway and the infra grant just so the public can hear more about it and have a, a broader discussion about Kind of what we're after and, and what the ask is so we'll spend uh, some time with that next week i'm not sure what other uh work session items we'll have but we'll have that one i'm for waiting sure. on one other topic to find out but that that might be the topic so okay yeah 
Um, trying to think of other stuff. Council members, anything going on on your? The only announcement I would make is to add to the Young Professionals Proclamation. I didn't say it in the proclamation, but um, it's my understanding that it doesn't have like an age limit, okay. so anybody could participate. Are you, are you thinking you're a young professional? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking the question. Exactly. Feel young. Yes, yes, yes. Fest Festival Mexicanos this weekend. Yeah, Grand opening tomorrow night at seven, yeah. so I'll be there for that. What was that? Uh, Festival yeah. Mexicanos this weekend. Yeah. yeah, so I'll be there for that. And I think just normal city stuff. There's be a lot going on. You got caught up on most of the stuff that's been keeping the going. So, yeah. Yeah. all right. End of the year contract negotiations. So yeah. So just give us. We have a jail right. contract coming up. We've got management. Emergency management kind of contract. So, Linda, we can hear you. Okay. We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's your dog. <laughs> uh, right. Your Honor, I guess the only other thing, just talking about budget, is that uh, here, end of September, 27th of September, will be the risk management board meeting where we'll be taking a look at the uh, rates and that kind of thing. And, uh, and we took the corresponding deduction in rates as we've always done year after year in our budget, so I'm sure that won't yeah. last it, right? And it should, it should be pretty close to what it was yeah. last year. We Good. don't see any, hasn't been anything happening that would... Cool. Good. And thank you for doing that. It's so nice to have people involved in the AWC stuff. So I appreciate you you doing that. Welcome. So Rivercom is in the process of doing their budget as well. And while we had a slight decrease last year, this year we'll have a, a little bit of an increase probably. Yeah, thank you for the email. And I forwarded it off to Brad to get that into the budget as well. 13 cents per call. Okay. Last year it went down about a dollar a call. So. Okay. But our volume is up. So the city's share went up as well. We're making sure we're getting the appropriate bills to Shelan County Fire District One for their calls. <laughs> I think there yes, was. I think I listening. just and and she's going to try and do a better job of getting us the numbers. Thank you. Every month now. Perfect. So. <laughs> and right. now she's including me, so I'll know when she hasn't sent them to you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. I guess Good. with that, we're adjourned. We'll see everybody next Thursday. Good. Thanks, Thank everybody. You.